Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Edward G. Robinson, Marlena Dietrich, and George Rapp in Manpower. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The hurricane blows, the lightning strikes without warning, sleet cuts down like a knife, and the lifeblood of the nation, electric power, is cut off. Night or day, in any kind of weather, manpower goes into action. Perched high in the air, inches from death, the line crews do the jobs that keep the wheels of defense plants rolling, that keep the lights burning, that keep your radio alive this very moment. Somewhere in America, right now, they're fighting a storm. So tonight, we salute these soldiers of the night with a play adapted from the Warner Brothers picture, Manpower, starring Edward G. Robinson, George Rath, and Marlena Dietrich. The same fine players who made it a hit on the screen. George Raft, incidentally, is busy producing shows himself these days. Boxing and wrestling shows for the boys in the armed forces. As the new national sports chairman of the Hollywood Victory Committee, he's enlarging his sports program to reach every camp in the country. Manpower is a drama at high tension. A story of men who live on a diet of danger and a woman who finds her destiny at their side. Exciting, certainly, but real, too. Because excitement like this makes the world go round. I think Manpower is a play you'll enjoy. But don't let the title fool you. Manpower wouldn't get very far without woman power. I don't think we would, either. The hand that rocks the cradle also raises the curtain here in the Lux Radio Theater by buying Lux Toilet Soap. Woman power is getting to be evident in every department of American life taking its place beside manpower in a hundred jobs, from the aircraft plants of California to the ammunition factories of New England. The women that run the homes of America are doing a defense job just the same as the others. And Lux Toilet Soap must be good to get a vote of confidence from women like these. There's the curtain signal for the first act of manpower, starring Edward G. Robinson as Hank, Marlena Dietrich as Faye, and George Rapp as Johnny. Power Patrol Car 3, calling Power Patrol 3. The tank of power line gone out. Find the brakes. Patrol Car 3, calling transmission. We found that brake. Yeah, line's down two miles east of Boston. Repair crew is on the tower now. <laughs> Crew is on the tower. Sixty feet above the ground, they cling to the steel skeleton. Black silhouettes against the jagged streaks of lightning. Lashed by the wind and rain, they match their strength against the storm. While all around them, high-tension wires, hot as a blast furnace, hum a song of death in their ears. The ground crew gazes up with anxious eyes. They know the power of those thin strands. One mistake, one misstep, 30,000 volts will flash in the night, and a man will die. Who's up there on that tower, Pop? Johnny and Hank. They've been up almost an hour. What's taking them so long? They're working right in that hot wire. I don't like it, Mr. Sweeney. Well, we can't kill the circuit now. Cut away that wire, you guys, before it kisses you off. It was a night like this that I got it. You can't trust hot wire. Like a cobra, it strikes you down without warning. Shut up, Pop. What do you say, Johnny? You want me to send up food and blankets? Take your time, Sweeney. If you think you can do any better, come on up and we'll come down. All right, all right. Just snap into it up there, that's all. Hey, Omaha, send up those flyers. Come on, you. You know, Johnny, I still can't understand it. Understand what? I can't understand why that mouse wouldn't kiss me tonight. Are you still hopping on that? Grab those pliers, Hank. Oh, I danced with her all night, and I bought her plenty of feet, too. I, I don't get it. Well, what's the way you move in? Well, i never seen a guy like you. You're with a dame two minutes, and she wants to bat your brains out. Well, I wouldn't say that. I, I've known plenty of gals that went completely off their nut about me. Who are you kidding? Why, every time I've ever seen you up at bat, you strike out. Yeah? 
Well, as soon as we fix this break, I'm going back to that little mouse. <laughs> the joint will be closed. Oh, so I'll open it. Uh, move over a second, will you? I'm going to cut this wire away. Eddie! Wire coming down! Hey, hey. Don't lean out that way. Hook your safety belt on. Hey, what do you think I am? A window washer? Eddie! Let her go! Watch out, sucker. You'll get your hair singed. Well, as long as it ain't a permanent wave, I ain't worried. Yes, sir, Johnny. The next time I catch up with that mouse, I'm going to try a new approach on it. Uh, you better keep your mind on what you're doing. You'll approach around the third bounce. Oh, well, come on, there. Just one more piece to snip. Uh, right up there. I'll take care of this one, Hank. Move over, will you? Go on. Sit down, amateur. Hey, what do you mean, amateur? I was cutting away loose wire when you was cutting teeth. All right, big shot. Cut away. But watch that loose end. The wind's whipping around like a cat's tail. Headache! Look out, Hank. Wire coming down. What's that end, Hank? Look out. Hank! <laughs> How did Hap Hank leaned out to cut some wire and it whipped around the hot stuff. Yeah. Johnny held on to him until we got a hand line up. How's he look? Bad. Johnny's been working on him for three hours. Artificial respiration. How is he coming, Johnny? He ain't breathing yet. Now, one way or the other, he won't do any more climbing with that leg. Hank always said he'd sooner be a corpse than a cripple. He ain't a corpse yet. I'll pull him through if I have to pump him for a week. I was out for six hours before I breathed. It cooks you, that hot wire. Your blood boils inside of you. I know what it's like. The night I got Shut up, to... Pop. Sweeney, look. He's breathing by himself. He's coming around. Uh, Give me that ammonia water. Come on, Hank. Open up. Oh, that's the fella. Come on, now. Uh, hey, you pulled uh, him through, Johnny. How do you feel, Mug? Well, I hate to disappoint that little number I got lined up for tonight, Johnny. Tell her I had a date with a nurse. <laughs> Yeah, and you come at night sometimes and see the night nurse I got. Now, there's a sweet mouse. <laughs> I bet she don't come within ten feet of you. Oh, no, is that you. so? Listen, all I got to do is push this little button and they come in jumping. You mean they go out jumping? <laughs> Did you ring? Yeah, that's right. Oh, boy. Hey, you're a new one, ain't you? Well, big. Oh, not bad either. <laughs> uh, how come I get a different nurse in here every time? Well, for this room, we always draw a lot. This time I lost. <laughs> what can I do for you? Uh, when do I get my supper? You just had your lunch. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, all I got to do is ring. Oh, when is the doc checking you out, Hank? Oh, about a week. But the leg will never be right. I got to settle down on the ground like a squirrel with a gout. So you think maybe the company will give me a job downstairs? Nope. Well, maybe they'll hand me an inside job, licking envelopes or something. Not a chance. Well, why it. not, say? They can't throw me away like an old insulator. Where till I get down there and tell those brass hats a few things? I'll, I'll take it easy before you blow a fuse. You can't have any of them jobs. Because the company's making you foreman of the gang. Well, they can't push me around. I'll tell them. Foreman? Hey, you're kidding. No. Nope. Here's the letter. Chief, we salute you. <laughs> <laughs> and now we don't have to come to work anymore. Well, Mug, <laughs> what do you say? Foreman? Well, say, what do you think of that? Yeah, but if you guys think you're going to put anything over on me, you're climbing up the wrong pole. I know all the tricks because I pulled them myself. <laughs> oh, Hank, I got to beat it. Uh, Pop's waiting downstairs for me. Okay, uh, coming back tomorrow? Oh, well, sure. All set, Pop. Get the car. How's Hank doing? Oh, he's doing fine. Did you tell him how I can't stand to go into a hospital, Johnny? Oh, he knows how it is. He don't like it himself. Johnny, I'm glad you're coming with me. It isn't easy, this, for me. Oh, you're just making it tough, Pop. Your daughter made a little mistake. Well, she did a year for it. And now she's coming out. So what? Some of the best families get their mail at the cooler. But it's not that simple, Johnny. Until Faye wrote me from this prison and I went to visit her, I hadn't seen her in 15 years. And when a man is a good father, he doesn't... Oh, you don't have to go into that again, Pop. A girl wound up being pinched in the Frisco ginger for clipping a sucker's wallet. Well, that wasn't your fault. It wasn't Faye's fault either. She was innocent. Oh, now, come on, Pop. You told me, but, but everything's going to work out okay. You and her are going to be the happiest father and daughter in this neck of the woods. I hope so. But, Johnny, none of the other boys are ever going to know Artie. I gave you my word, Pop. Thank you, Johnny. There she is. That's her. Coming out now. Yeah, good-looking girl for you, Pop. I, I don't know what to say to her, Johnny. Well, think fast. Here she is. Hello. Hello, Faye. I came down to pick you up. Thanks. Got a cigarette? 
No, I don't smoke much. You, you look very good, Faye. Don't kid me. I just got a peek at myself in the mirror. A little pale, maybe. <sighs> it feels good to be out of that hen house. I bet it does. Oh, this is Johnny Marshall, the fellow I work with. Hello. Hiya. Johnny helped get you out, Faye. He knew a fellow on the parole board. Thanks. Have you got a cigarette? Yeah, sure. Take them all. I must look like something that came in with a tie. I sure could use some powder and lipstick. Mm, sorry, I left mine home. Oh, there's a drugstore across the street. I'll go over and get you some. Wait here. Yes, sir? What can I do for you, sir? I want a lipstick. Uh, a lipstick? What shade? Anything, as long as it's red. We have a wide assortment of shades, sir. I take the million. Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? What new face powders you've got? Well, we've been selling a lot of Andre. I take a box, and one of those combs, and a card of barbie pins, and a box of cleansing tissue, and a carton of cigarettes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, ain't there something you'd like for after dinner? Don't strain your wallet, brother. I'll pay for it. Oh, forget it. Figure there's a little coming out present. After a year in that birdcage, I don't feel like wisecracking about it. I need a good overhauling. You're not kidding. What do you mean? Oh, that hello you gave your father. Why, you thought he was the DA, DA who dropped you behind those bars. Now, listen, Mr. Marshall. You handle your family, and I'll handle mine. I'm just as unimportant as you are. Leave me alone. Okay. Got a cent? Oh, sure. But that ain't gonna pay the bill. I want to get weighed. Oh, uh, here you are. Thanks. Hmm. You're getting your fortune with it. Bargain day. Mm-hmm. I could use a couple of more pounds. Just about a couple. This thing tells great fortunes. Listen to this. Your future will be as bright as your past. <laughs> oh, uh, what are you going to do in Los Angeles? Oh, I get by one way or another. Hmm. Why don't you try the other way for a change? Because there's too many guys like you crawling around. Hey, steady, what? Hello? Hey, I can't hear you. Hey, shut up, you guys. I'm on the phone. Hello, yeah? Okay, okay. Who was it? Transmission. Everybody's got to stick near the phone tonight. We're making a call. Hiya, Muggs. Oh, hello, Hank. Just got a call from Transmission. Yeah, we figured that. Hey, Johnny, how'd Hank do with them Berlet Scouts tonight? Uh, Hank's girl had a headache. We sent him home early. Yeah, Hank must treat his dames rough. They all get headaches. What do you do with them, Hank? Club them? Now, listen, you're talking to the guy who finds them, feeds them, and forgets them. <laughs> who are you bullin'? You've been trained down so often, you're beginning to look like a bedspread. Now, if you don't shut that flap of yours, you're going to be spitting teeth all over the room. Now, lay off, Hank. Now, I get all the dates I want, any time I want them, understand? <laughs> oh, take it easy, Hank. Yeah, yeah, cut it out. Yeah, sure. I'm oh, sorry, Cully. Huh. That's all right. I was shooting my mouth off. Well, uh, how about a few hands of poker, guys, huh? Yeah, what do you say? Get the pot out. Johnny, uh, guess I was out of line again, huh? Yeah. Way out. Yeah, you know, I can't figure it. You know, that's what makes me sore. I like the dames, but they don't go for me. I'm strictly cold wire in that department. For every guy in the world is a dame. You just gotta wait. Yeah, I'm waiting. But I want to whisper I love you with my own teeth. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll get it. Oh, uh, if that's your blonde friend, are you in or out? Well, if it's her, I'm in and I'm ready to go out. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, this is Johnny. Okay. Okay, I'll tell him. Trouble? Yeah, some lines up in the mountains are icing. The insulator's broke. Uh, uh, come on, you monkeys. Everybody out. And wear your red underwear. Hello? Transmission? Well, this is Hank McHenry. Yeah, we fixed that break and put the juice through. Yeah, look, uh, tell Sweeney we lost a man tonight. Well, the wire fell. Now, yeah, the last guy in the bunch you'd expect to get it. Old Pop Duval. File card. In case of accident, notify Faye Duval, daughter. I never knew Pop had a daughter, did you? Yeah, I knew. Ever see her? Once. Well, I uh, guess I'd better go tell her. Yeah, I ain't very good at handing out that sort of stuff. Uh, Johnny, uh, will, will you come with me? Oh, well, you're the boss. I, I don't want to horn in oh, on her. Come on, come on, Johnny, will you? Okay, but I won't be any help to you. Uh, thanks. Two oh six. 
Well, this must be the apartment. Ring the bell. Mm. Hey, uh, how does those dames stack up? Uh, what you like? A dame? Well? Oh. Hello. What do you want? Oh, this is Hank McHenry. Yeah, I guess you know who I am, Miss Duval. Never heard of you. Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm a foreman at the uh, Power and Light Company. Uh, your father used to work for me. So he used to work? What do you mean, used to work for you? Well, uh, your father had an accident. He got tagged by a hot wire. Yeah, we uh, brought his clothes and stuff. Put him down over there. But it, it, it wasn't nobody's fault, miss. He just didn't get out of the way. Maybe he didn't want to get out of the way. Sometimes I don't want to get out of the way myself. He tried to be kind the last few weeks. Is that the best you can say for your old man? Yeah. I'm afraid that's the best I can say. That's great. Come on, Hank. I need some fresh air. Hey, uh, hey, Johnny, wait a oh, minute. Oh, let uh, him go, and you better go, too. Uh, uh, d- d- don't mind, Johnny. Uh, you see, he-, he knew Pop better than most of us, and... Uh... Well, I guess he feels that you, uh... Yes, I know. He thinks I ought to break down and get hysterical over a father I hardly knew. Oh. I'm sorry he's dead. But that doesn't make me forget what he did to my mother. Well, if there's anything I can do, if you need something, my, you, can, you can get me at the office. I wouldn't need you. Thanks, anyhow. Well, you, you, you got a job? Yeah. I'm working at the Midnight Club. Big attraction, I am. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> Well, uh, maybe I'll drop in and see you sometime. It's a clip joint. Well, that's all right. I'm a big boy now. <laughs> well, thanks again. Goodbye. Uh, g- goodbye. So you did come, didn't you? Oh, uh, hello, hello. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask for you. Well, we saved a lot of time. Uh, yeah, uh, well, sit down. Uh, What's on your mind? Oh, not a thing, uh... Say, you know, I, I thought maybe you was the cashier here or something. No, I'm just one of the entertainers. Want to dance? Oh, no. <laughs> it's a relief to find one guy who don't think he was born with wings on his oh, heels. say, I used to burn up the floor. I got a room full of dancing cups taller than you. But uh, since I tangled my foot with a hot wire, I ain't quite as good as I was. Sorry I brought it oh, up. that's okay. Uh, you know, the uh, real reason I came here was on the count of finding out that your old man had a little insurance. And the company asked me to bring it to you. Here, uh, it's all yours. What's your angle? What do you mean, angle? What's this bait for? My father didn't have any insurance. Well, he worked for me, didn't he? I ought to know what he had. He had insurance. Not much. Uh, 150 bucks worth. Here, put it away. Don't horse me, mister. What have you got in mind? Well, all right, you win. And I just figured you might need the dough. You probably got a lot of bills piling up on you. <laughs> I got a few. But you don't look like any captain of finance. Oh, say, I got plenty and no one to spend it on. Except dames, of course. Got a lot of them on the string, but that still leaves me plenty of Mazuma. Bet you ain't getting rich in this flea bag. You're right there. I don't get anything out of this joint but tired. I could use a few bucks. Well, take it all. No, no, just 50. And thanks. You get it back. Well, I ain't worrying. You're a new kind of a guy for a dump like this. Now, you better lock that wallet in your pocket and get out of here. Look, I, I told you, I came here to talk to you. This is a clip joint. And after three drinks, every tick of the clock will cost you a buck. What time do you blow out of here? <laughs> About five tomorrow morning. Five? Well, you dames got a pretty loose union, ain't you? <laughs> uh, how about me picking you up when you're through? Look, I, I got a date with a little redhead, but I could try, try to lose her about 4.30, then come over here. We could go someplace for ham and eggs. Oh, I'll be tired then. Let's save it for another time. When? Oh, whenever you have some time off. All right, I'll call you. Uh, check here. Uh, Good night, Faye. Good night. You okay? Well, thanks. <laughs> you too. Hey, Hank. Oh, hello, John. Hey, say, what are you doing out here? I'm waiting for you. Why do you waste your time with a dame like that? Ah, oh, she seems all right. You just didn't give her a chance. I wanted to see if she was fixed all right for dough. I'll tell you how she's fixed. As long as there's one guy left in the lure with a little loose dough in his pocket, she's going to do okay. Now, cut it out, Johnny. She's strictly a no good. I said cut it out. Okay, Hank. Okay. (laughs) 
just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Edward G. Robinson, Marlena Dietrich, and George Raft, will return in Act Two of Manpower. And now, here's a young man not getting the phone number he wants. Operator, will you try that number again, please? Main, one, two, three, four. Well, of all the luck, Mary's line is always busy. Yes, Mary's popular. And no wonder, for Mary is a Lux Soap girl. A girl whose complexion is so fresh and radiant that everyone says, Isn't she attractive, though? My, but she's pretty. Well, you know, there's something about a soft, appealing skin that makes people say just that, whether a girl's features are perfect or not. Now, if someone should tell you a simple complexion care that famous Hollywood stars depend on to help keep their skin soft and lovely, you'd want to try it, wouldn't you? Well, right in your own home, you can take the Lux Soap Active Lather Facial that screen stars take every day. Here's what Loretta Young says about it. Lux Toilet Soap has such wonderful creamy lather. I pat it lightly into my skin, rinse with warm water, then a dash of cool. Then with a towel, I pat my face gently to dry. This Lux Soap Facial leaves skin feeling beautifully smooth. Try Loretta Young's Active Lather Facials for 30 days. Compare the smooth, rich lather Lux Toilet Soap gives with that of other soaps you've used. You'll like the way this fine, soothing lather caresses your skin. Get three cakes of fragrant white Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow and see what this gentle care with Hollywood's Beauty Soap can do for you. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of Manpower, starring Edward G. Robinson as Hank, Marlena Dietrich as Faye, and George Raft as Johnny. Hank isn't being very smart about Faye Duval. Every night for weeks, he's been sitting in the club where she works. And every night for weeks, when he comes home, Johnny eyes him quietly and says nothing. But now Hank is buying presents for the girl, and Johnny is losing patience. Come on, come on, Johnny. Well, you, you got better taste than me. Uh, pick something out for her, will you? You'd know what Faye'd like. All I know is that you're seeing too much of that dame. Now, let's not get into that again, will you? She's a good kid. Yeah, I know, I know. Fresh out of finishing school. Well, she's had tough breaks. Oh, a bargain basement turns on the crying act and you mop it all up. Why, if you buy her so much as a chocolate soda, you're being a sucker. Well, she rates the best I can buy. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to do that hearts and flowers routine over that dame, are you? Oh, me? Yeah, I'm strictly a love and leave them guy. Oh, stop it. This is me you're talking to. Oh, well, anyway, I'm just buying her something out of remembrance to her old man. Well, before you get any deeper, there's a couple of things you better know about that dame. I know everything I want to know. Oh, no, you don't. Well, I wasn't going to spill this, Hank, but I guess I'd better. You mean about a year in the cooler? Well, who told you? She did. Now, you see what a straight-shooting dame she is? All I can see is that she was smart enough to beat me to the punch. <laughs> It's, uh, it's all yours, Faye. Happy birthday. Who said this was my birthday? Well, uh, someday's got to be a birthday, so I'm either early or late. <laughs> You're never going to get rich buying things for me. Well, that's all right. Uh, I get a kick out of it. Uh, here, it's uh, one of those things, uh, you know, uh, uh, a negligee. Well, it's beautiful, Hank. It's expensive, too. Well, uh, what's money for except to be spent? What's going on? What is on your mind? Nothing. Yeah, does a guy have to have something on his mind when he gives a dame a present? Come on, Hank. You can tell me. Well, uh, you're, 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 you're a swell girl, Fay, and like I've been telling you, you oughtn't to live here alone. So you're suggesting I ought to move in with you? Yeah, will you? Now, how about it? We can take out a license tomorrow morning. License? Yeah, well, don't blame me. It's a state law. You know, they make you get one before you can get married. Hank. You want me to marry you? Well, sure. What did you think I meant? Oh, I know. I ain't no bargain, but I'll always be in there trying. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of you good, and I'll, I'll do the best I can to make you happy. Well, Hank, before you get one of any tighter, let me tell you this. I'm wrong for you. Well, first we'll get married, and then we can talk about it. But look, Hank. Bouncing around clip joints ain't the best build-up for a wedding march. Well, you ain't done anything. I haven't. I'm not in love with you, Hank. Well, that's all right. I'll have enough for both of us. Now, uh, look, honey... <laughs> You, 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 you got to marry me. Now, I bought you that negligee thing so, so I could see you in it. You're a pretty sudden guy, Hank. You've caught me without an answer. i got to think about it. Oh, 
What do you got? got? Okay, figures. okay, I got three Johns. Uh, three tens. Ah, he does it to me every time. Oh, hi, Hank. Uh, Want to sit in? Yeah, pull up a chair, Hank. No, no, not tonight, boys. <clears throat> Say, I got a little news for you. Yeah, you fellas ever hear the old saying, the two can live cheaper than one? Yeah, but it's worth the difference to me to stay single. Well, me, I'm going to give it a chance and see how it works. Hey, what are you talking about? You mean you're going to get hitched? Yeah, <laughs> no one else, boys. The little babe has been chasing me hard, so I finally gave in. You're all invited to the wedding. Well, who's the dame? What circus did you get her out of? Yeah, what are you going to do about her beard? Oh, I knew this was a mistake telling you guys anything. You don't know what a mistake it's going to be. Well, come on. We can oh, whose deal is it? What'll it be this time, Faye? The usual, Mike. Make mine a beer. Right. How many of these can you handle a night? Well, do you think I'm dope enough to drink anything strong around a dame like you? All right, Diamond Jim. What are you selling? I ain't selling. I'm buying. How much do you want to leave Hank alone? How much are you offering? I got 200 bucks that says you don't marry him. Ha, ah, what a weak voice you have, Grandpa. Uh, don't con me. You've never seen that much loose dough all at once. I'm telling you to leave Hank alone. How do you know I'm, I'm not mad about him? Look, sister, don't bull me. You've been in circulation a long, long time. You got a lot of gall crawling in here and setting yourself up as the old family lawyer. I don't know whether to laugh in your face or bat it in with a bottle. Well, you better stick to the laughing. I duck fast and swing faster. Hank ain't very bright, but he's my friend. And if he hooks up with a dame like you, he's tying into a lot of headaches he never figured on. I'm on to your racket. You got the blueprints all drawn, haven't you? Yeah, you got a line, sister, but it ain't what makes a wife for a right guy. So I'm telling you straight. I get you ever seen him. Here's your dough. You can take that money and put it back in your pocket. Go buy yourself some manners. <laughs> to waste on you? Now listen, mister. Before you came in here, I was worrying about Hank. I'd figured I wouldn't marry him. Because he is a regular guy and he has been swell with me. But now I'm going to marry him whether you like it or not. Now get out. <laughs> come on, come on, everybody. Kiss the bride. Come on, kiss the bride, Johnny. What is the last chance anybody's going to get? <laughs> You're not very enthusiastic, Johnny. Should I be? Hey, hey, kiss your drink. Hold it. Uh, oh, 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 hold it. Well, now that you've got Hank, what are you going to do with him? Now, look, mister. Even if I was all you think I am, I'd be smart enough to play ball. All I got to say to you is keep your nose clean. You got the hook in him, and don't let me catch you twisting it around. What makes you think I couldn't be on the level with a guy? You can't even be on the level with yourself. You got that clip joint in your blood, and you'll never lose it. Have you ever been fooled? Uh-huh. But not by a dame like you. steps. That's a few more steps. Happy New Year. Can you get him in all right? Sure. Come on, Hank. This is the first time I ever heard of the groom being carried over the threshold. Mm. Where do you want him? On the couch. Easy, Hank. That's the boy. Sleep it off, fella. Does he do this often? Mm, not too often. I'm used to taking care of him if you want me to. Thank you for the offer. But I signed up for a job today and it's never too soon to start learning. Oh, you're sure you won't get absent-minded and lift his bankroll? This is your station, mister. You get off here. Good night. Well, I'll give you my phone number in case you need any help. I know what I have to do and I'm not asking for any help or advice from anyone. I made a deal. Bad or good, I'm going to work it out. Yeah. Hmm, that sounds all right. Maybe you've got sense. Not too much. Good night. Good night. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? All right, all right. Come on, step on it, Joe. Well, we ain't got all day. Well, we had 
Mr. Frank? Central Airport. We're pushing the lines back so they can land them big bombers. Well, why don't they build the fields right in the first place? So guys like us can have jobs fixing them up again. Yeah, well, I don't like planes. In fact, I don't like traveling. I'm strictly a homeboy. Oh. Yeah? Who's home? And is she blonde or brunette? Uh, am I particular? Well, now, can't you guys ever talk about anything but dames? Well, how do we know? We never tried. Hey, listen to Hank. He gets married, so we don't have to talk about him anymore. <laughs> hey, Hank, your wife's still working at the clip joint? Hey, what do you mean? Huh? He didn't mean anything, Hank. What do you mean, Collie? Oh, uh, nothing, Hank. Only... Only what? Cut it! Cut it! Come oh, on, Hank, forget it! Hank! Not in the trunk. What's the matter with you? Now get over there. Sit down and cool off. Yeah. It's because Faye's had a tough time getting the groceries. There ain't any reason for wise guys to be making cracks. That goes for everybody, understand? Oh, forget it. You all right, Cully? Yeah. Gee, Hank, you oughtn't to get that sore. You're going to kill somebody one of these days. Oh, you're both all wet. You ought to put some glue on that mouth of yours, Cully. And Hank, you better keep them hands in your pocket. You're way out of line again. Way out. Come on now, you guys. Shake hands. Sorry, Hank. I didn't mean to get you on your ear. Uh, I didn't mean to put you on yours. Sorry, Cully. That's okay. How's it going up there, Johnny? Tighten up a little more. Cully, tighten up. Hold it. Hattie, headache. Hey, watch out where you're dropping that stuff. I yelled headache, didn't I? Coming down. Okay, shake it up. Hey, Omaha, we're moving up to the next ball. All set up there, Hank. Oh, boy, this fog's getting awful thick. You can't even see the tops of the poles. Yeah, well, how'd you like to be up in the plane in this suit? <laughs> the ground's good enough for me. I was born on it, and I'm going to live on it. Stick in this racket, and you'll be in it. Hey, look at that plane up there. Look at it. It's a wonder they don't tangle with them wires every time they take off. Oh, they've been combing my hair for, for me all morning. Well, get the boys moving to Omaha. Okay. Come on, you guys. Hop it up. Well, hiya, Hank. All over the heat wave? Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, the way you went after Cully before, I thought you were going to finish him. Oh, that? Yeah, say, I, I, I got to watch my step, huh? Mm, but good. You know, Hank, Cully said something after you socked him. He said you ought to watch out. You know, you might kill somebody someday. Maybe he's got something there. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but I, 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 I just can't help it, you know. When I get ripped like that, something happens inside of me. Something that isn't even me at all. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. And all I can hear is something in my head saying, kill him, kill him, kill that guy. And the next thing you know, I could kick myself all over the lot for it. And you, you, you think uh, Cully's still sore? Nah, he's okay. Well, I'll invite him up to the house for dinner or something. Uh, say, what about tonight? You, you coming? Well, uh, I don't know. Oh, uh... Come on, come on. What's the matter with you? Faye's expecting you. Oh, look, it's getting to be a habit, Hank. Well, so what? Don't you like the food? Oh, sure I like it. But if I show up there again this week, Faye will be calling the cops. After all, you're practically still on your honeymoon. Well, I'm asking you for supper. Faye's making uh, one of her corned beef and cabbage dinners, you know, and one of them omelets with all that junk in it, a big salad, and my favorite pie, mm. huckleberry. What? No pudding? No, I'm on a diet. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, Hank. Uh, let's finish this thing. Come on, Johnny. Uh, up that pole. Okay. Cully! Rig that winch line. Ready and waiting, Hank. Anything running hot up there? Upper and lower circuit. Well, Johnny, watch the upper and lower, will you? They're hot. Okay. Hey, uh, Barney, Russ, uh, go down and clear the wires off that other pole. Hey, Hank, you think maybe we ought to quit? Quit? What for? Uh, Barney says he can't even see the ground from up top. It's like working in the dark up there. Well, we only got two more, and the officer's yelling. Okay, Johnny? Yeah. Well, uh, we got the uh, winch line rigged. Anytime you're set. Hand line coming at you, Johnny. Let's have it. Hey, where's that plane? I don't know. Sounds like it's coming this way, though. Well, I hope he knows where he's heading. He sounds kind of low. Yeah, they've been missing the pose by inches all hey, day. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, come on down. What for? Never mind. Come on down. Hank, there he is. Johnny, he's heading for the pole. Johnny, kick off. Kick off. Got a Johnny, kick off. <laughs> How you feeling, Johnny? Got all them ribs out of your liver yet? Oh, I'm okay, I guess. Hey, you were right about that night nurse. <laughs> oh, she's a pip. <laughs> you bet. You're <laughs> looking fine, Johnny. When does the doctor say you'll be out? Oh, he says I got to give them ribs plenty of time to patch up. Well, they ain't going to patch you up in this joint. You're going to come home with Faye and me. Oh, uh, wait a minute. You ain't going to stay cooped up here in this baddest factory. We got a nice room for you. And uh, there ain't a nurse in the whole joint that can match Faye. Any way you look at it. Oh, it's too much trouble for you. Won't be any trouble at all, Johnny. 
And you'll be much more comfortable than here. Oh, I'm a rotten patient. I squawk about everything. Well, we'll shut you up. I ain't forgot how to use a spud wrench. Oh, hello. Are you up again? You're supposed to be an invalid, Johnny. Oh, I'm fed up with that invalid routine. What's the matter? Don't you like the service around here? Oh, you're up the wrong pole. Why, you've been swell. My own mother couldn't have taken care of me any better. Oh, forget it. Someday when I fall off a towel, you can take care of me. Hiya, family. Well, well, our son's getting pretty big, ain't he, honey? You know, you need a shave, Junior. Hiya, Hank. Well, here's the groceries, honey. Oh, oh sorry, honey. I'll pick him up. It's good I didn't tell you to oh, get eggs. Sorry. Oh, what's new on the job, Hank? Uh, not so good. You know, they're making a floating gang out of us for a couple of months. Oh, where are you going to be working? On that new Harper Dam line. We go next week. Yeah, I wish he was well enough to come along with us. I'll be there. Yeah? Well, what does the doc say? Well, from now on, I'm the doctor. A little more of this doing nothing, I'll be climbing poles that ain't there. Time for your milk, Johnny. Oh, I just had a glass of that cow juice. That was two hours ago. Come on, come on, Junior. Down the hatch. All right. <laughs> How do babies stand that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I was just getting a bottle of beer. Want one? No, thanks. Kind of hot tonight, ain't it? Yeah. Having trouble sleeping. Hmm, this stuff might help. I don't think so. What's the matter? Something bothering you? No. Why? Well, you sure look at her. Oh, I, I know Hank ain't the easiest guy to get along with. I'm not complaining. No, you're not. A... I never figured you'd stay in harness so long. How do you mean? Well, uh, dames like you sometimes get restless. You miss the lights and the noise and the people and things. If I miss anything, that's not it. Oh, yeah. You know you've made Hank a very happy guy. Well, every day's Valentine's Day for him. I've tried. You know, sometimes I get the idea you don't feel like cheering. What's worrying you? I told you nothing. You sure? Yeah. I'm sure. Well, you can paste this in your little notebook. I'm Hank's friend and yours, too. If there's something wrong, you, you can always count on me. Can I? Sure. All right. You asked for it. And tell me some way I can get you out of my mind. What did you say? You heard me. Tell me some way I can get you out of my mind. Are you nuts? I don't know. Maybe I am. Don't stand there looking at me like that. Did I knock you off that pole? Did I fix it so that you'd spend a month here in the house? Well, listen, I ain't got anything to do with it. I, well, I never said anything. Well, I never even gave you a look. I, I never even thought. I know that. Things like that just happen. No one wants them to happen. They just do. <laughs> Station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Edward G. Robinson, George Rast, and Marlena Dietrich in Act Three of Manpower. And now, here's our young friend, Sally, who looks very pleased about something. Mr. Ruick, I've got the grandest compliment. Uh, for... for me, Sally? Well, now, that's very nice <laughs> Sorry, of you. Sorry, Mr. Ruick. It's for Lux Toilet Soap. Oh, why, why, of course, Sally. Our product gets compliments all the time. This one's very special, though. You see, my brother Jim's home on me. Oh, that nice lad who joined the Navy a few months back? Yes, and he looks wonderful. So healthy and brown. Likes it, huh? You should hear him brag about his ship, Mr. Ruick. Says the food is grand. And kids me about seeing the latest movies before I do. And now I come to Lux Toilet Soap. When I handed him a fresh cake for his bath, he said, Say, sis, this soap of yours goes good aboard ship, too. Lux Soap, a hit with the Navy, Sally. Well... Yes. Jim said at the ship store where the men can buy everything from ice cream sodas to their favorite cigarettes. Lux Soap is in big demand. Jim said, no wonder, when it does such a swell job of slicking a man up, even by Navy standards. 
And you know, Mr. Ruick, Navy standards are something. Yes, Sally, that is a real compliment for Lux Toilet Soap. And it certainly makes us all feel good to realize that the men in the service get not only the comforts of home, but some of the luxuries, too. Like the latest books and movies and chocolate bars and even a fine toilet soap. Yes, Lux is a fine soap. With all the quality the Navy demands in everything purchased for the use of its men. It's pure. It's really mild. It gives a generous, creamy, active lather that makes it a perfect bath soap, too. And here's a tip for the thrifty-minded. Lux toilet soap is hard-milled. That means a single cake lasts and lasts, right down to the thinnest sliver. Why don't you take a tip from Uncle Sam's boys who know a good thing when they see it? Let your whole family enjoy this smooth, luxurious white soap. You can, because Lux toilet soap costs so little, especially when you buy it the economical three cakes at a time way. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act three of Manpower, starring Edward G. Robinson, Marlena Dietrich, and George Raft. Two weeks have passed, and Johnny is back on the job again. They're a floating crew now, working away from home, and Hank is getting lonesome for Faye. In a roadside hamburger stand, he looks with distaste at the dinner he's ordered, but cannot eat. Now, look at them biscuits. I could punch rivets with them. Ah, oh, gee, I wish Faye was here, then we could have something decent. I'm going to send for her. Oh, this ain't no place for a dame. But I ain't seen Faye in ten days. You know, I never was a guy for long-distance romances. Well, you know, the company don't like no women hanging around the job. Well, there ain't no law that says a foreman's wife can't come to see him. Well, Faye wouldn't like it up here. Well, sure she will. I'm here, ain't I? I'm going to wire her to come up on the next bus. Hey, where's Hank running to? Wiring his wife to come up. Ask her if she's got a friend. I seen the wife. Not bad. How does a gimp like Hank write a dame like that? Ah, she graduated from a clip joint. She ain't no bargain. Listen, can that talk, or one of these days you'll fall off that pole and it won't be accidental. We wasn't talking to you. We were just making some innocent comments. Well, tend to your grub while you still got some teeth to do it with. Don't pop off at me, brother. You're going to have a mouth full of knuckles. Yeah, and you'll be minus a hand. Listen, I don't take that from anybody. You don't, huh? Oh, fightin' it, Johnny. You laid him out like a rug. Take him up and throw him out of here. It might improve the joint. Hey, uh, what goes on? What's the matter here, Johnny? Oh, nothing, Hank. Just a slight disagreement, that's all. Yeah, it ain't nothing a hospital can't fix. Well, uh, did you sock that guy, Johnny? Yeah. Well, this time you was out of line. Mm, not so far. What was the beef? Well, there wasn't any beef. Well, he must have done something. You don't go around laying guys out for the fun of it. Lay off, will you? The guy wanted a fight, and he picked me. Forget it. Funny, I ain't got an answer yet. And I guess you grabbed the bus last night, huh? Mm, uh, I guess so. Oh, say, I better get my junk out of the shack. You don't want me hanging around with Faye coming up. Well, uh, you won't mind, will you, Johnny? You know how it is. Oh, uh... sure, sure. I'll call in with one of the other boys. Don't worry about me. Yeah, well, I'm going down to meet the bus. Uh, uh, how about having supper with us? Nah, you and Faye will have a lot to talk over. Anyway, I got my eye on that dame over at the hamburger joint. Oh, come on now, will you? Forget that, Hashlinger. Grab some grub with Faye and me. Well, they would have a lot of laughs. Go on, beat it. I got work to do. Oh, okay. Boy, if this weather don't let up, we'll be working with water wings. See you, Johnny. Yeah, so long. Hello, Foreman Shack. Los Angeles calling Mr. McHenry. Oh, he ain't here, but I'll take it. Go ahead, please. Hello? Mr. McHenry, this is Sergeant Freeman of the Los Angeles Police Department. Who? Los Angeles Police. We picked up a girl in a raid on the Midnight Club. She says she's your wife, and we're just checking up on it. Oh, okay. I'll be in to get her. All right, Mr. Val, you're out. Thanks. Johnny, how did you find out? Was it in the papers or on the radio or something? Well, where's Hank? Did he come with you? It was funny the way I got caught. All the time I worked there, I was never picked up. So last night, I was only in there a couple of minutes talking with the girls, and all of a sudden, the place was full of cops, so I... <gasps> so you couldn't stand the smell of fresh air? Oh, darn! You had to crawl back into that sewer, didn't you? How often have you been doing it? Every time Hank had his back turned. Oh, Johnny. I... Oh, Johnny. No, turn on the waterworks for me. It don't register. I wasn't working. Oh, there. I had you tag right the first time I saw you. A nickel and dime dame out to pick up a free ride. You got no right to. And that line of hot air you dished out about being in love with me. You really had me thinking about you. Worrying about the way I treated you. 
Why, I should have known better. I meant it. Every word of it. You forgot your suitcase. Thanks. A suitcase? What were you doing with that when you got pinched? I was walking out. Heading for Chicago. Walking out on Hank, huh? Why, a guy can pick up a mongrel and feed him. Give him a place to sleep and he'll stick. But not you, huh? No, not me. Go on, hit me again if that'll make you feel any better. I've been hit before. And harder. That wasn't anything the way you're going to be smacked. Why, if I ever catch you out of line again, you're going to... Oh, you're going to hang, just like I asked you. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. And we're going to forget all about this. Hank's never going to hear about it. You just missed the bus. You understand? Johnny, what is the satisfaction do you get seeing me caged up with Hank? You're married to him, ain't you? That's where a wife belongs, with her husband. And that's where you're going. You're not running away. You still don't get it, do you? I was running away from you. Because you were always around. And I couldn't stand it anymore. Because I was going crazy every time I thought of you. Because I love you. And because you and Hank were friends, I was setting myself up behind the eight ball again. You think it was easy to walk out? It was the hardest thing I ever did. Now go on and hit me. Hit me. You're taking the bus. Tonight. up there. Well, there they got to shoot the line hard. Okay, on the conductors. Tell them to shoot this juice whenever they're ready. Okay, clamp in that sky wire. Oh, how's it going, Hank? Well, where the devil have you been? Sorry, Hank. Had some business. Well, your business is here. The storm's torn out two of the main lines. Come on, I'll grab your belt to get up that tower. Hank, I'm quitting. What? I'm blowing. Checking out of the crew. What for? What's the matter? Well, I'm tired of being holed up on a maintenance job. This is the longest I've ever been in one spot since I was old enough to button my own shirt. Now, look, Johnny, I don't know what your beef is, but uh, we'll fix it up. The uh, substation needs this line to carry the load. Now, get over to the truck, will you, and get somebody slicker and start climbing. What do you say? Okay, but when the job is through, I'm quitting. Had a boy. Now, watch yourself. It's going to be harder than an electric chair up there. I'm going to the shack and phone him to shoot the juice, so uh, figure the line wire's hot from now on. Hello, uh, give me the substation. Make it fast. Hey. Hey. Well, for the love... When did you get in? Just a little while ago. Uh, wait a second. Uh, hello, uh, Barney. Uh, Hank talking. Yeah, it's okay on that feet. Uh, shoot him hot any time you want. Okay. Well, gee, honey. Uh, storm held you up, huh? Did you get stuck on the road? No. I came up on the bus with Johnny. Yeah, well, how come? He was on the bus. Hey, uh, what's the matter with that guy? He just quit on me. Did he say anything to you about it? Quit? Yeah, he's walking out. Did he give you a hint? Is he in trouble with some dame or something? Yes. He is. <laughs> oh, so some little mouse finally caught up with him. <laughs> I knew they'd get him someday. That's all right. I'll fix it up for him. Who is it? Me. You? Oh, now, stop ribbing, baby. <laughs> now, now, who is it? I told you, me. I was leaving you, Hank. But Johnny made me come up here. You were... You were leaving me? Why? You know I never loved you. I told you that before I married you. It hasn't worked out, Hank. It never will. Well, why hasn't it worked out? On account of Johnny? Because he was moving in all the time? It wasn't Johnny's fault. I... I just fell in love with him. Oh, you just fell in love. Yeah, I know how that guy operates. Well, what a first-class dope I was. Bringing him into my own house so he could work easier. How long has this two-timing been going on? Now, wait a minute, Hank. Don't get Johnny wrong. He didn't do... Oh, oh no, no, I ain't got Johnny wrong. I just got him right for the first time. Hank! And if you're figuring on going away with him, you better change your plans because he ain't going to be in condition to go anywhere. Hank, come back. You don't know what you're doing. He's running hot up there. Now, watch yourself. Oh, hiya, Hank. Everything's going great. Where's Johnny? Up top. Give me a wrench. A wrench? Come on, come on. Give me a wrench. Hey, what's the matter? Hey, where you going? I'm going up to see Johnny. Hey, listen, wait. Hey, Hank, you can't climb no pole with that leg. Hey, Hank! Stop him! Stop him! What's the matter with that guy? Get him up there! He's going to kill Johnny! What? Johnny! Johnny! He's going to kill you! Kill him. Kill him. One more step. Another one. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Hank, is that you? Kill him. Don't come up here, Hank. Kill, kill. 
Are you crazy or something? Get out there. Get down. One more step. Kill him. Hank, what's the matter with you? Oh, you can reach and fling that wrench. Hank, kill him. What the? Hank, listen. Kill him. Hank, look out for that wire. It's hot. Kill, 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 kill. Hank, look out. Get a line up here. I can't hold him. Get a line. I can't hold him. I tell you, I can't hold him. I seen him fall, all the way from the top, over and over. Oh, cut it out, Cully. Johnny, okay? Yeah. Where is he? He's over there. Just about finished, Johnny. Call the substation. Okay. Tell him to have an ambulance over here in a hurry. It's all right, Hank. It's all right, Hank. I'm here. I'm with you, Hank. He's coming around with us. Uh, uh, take it easy, Hank. You're going to be all right. Yeah. Who are you, Horson? <laughs> this is it. What kind of talk is that? What are you doing, quitting? Oh. The game's over. Time to go home. You know, I'm a... I'm a pretty sudden guy, Johnny. Yeah, Hank. Too sudden. You look at the long blueprints. Hank, it doesn't matter what you think of me. But I want you to believe that Johnny didn't do anything. He was bringing me back. Making me come back. Yeah. Please, Hank. Please believe me. Sure. I, uh... I was out of line again, hey, Johnny? Yeah. Well, way out. Yeah, every time I get tangled up with a dame, I do the wrong thing. It was my fault, Hank. It was all my fault. I oh, know. Uh, you're okay, honey. Johnny, uh, take take care of her good like I try to do, will you? Sure, Hank. Hey, uh, did anyone yell headache when I was coming down? Sure, Hank. Uh, good. I'm glad nobody got hurt. Hank. Oh, Hank. Your applause is a command. A command to Edward G. Robinson, Marlena Dietrich, and George Raff to return to this microphone for a curtain call. Congratulations to all three of them on some stirring acting. Well, thank you, C.B. And congratulations to you, sir, on the anniversary which you will celebrate this week. Oh, how does it feel to tuck that 30th year away? A picture making under your belt, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, when the public tells me how it feels about my 30th anniversary picture, Reap the Wild Wind. Well, we have three gentlemen approaching this microphone. We're going to tell you how they feel about your anniversary right now. Three of your competitors, C.B., with a word to say about those 30 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce three of Hollywood's best-known motion picture directors. George Stevens, Mark Sandridge, and E.H. Griffith. Thank you, George. We're here tonight, C.B., as a committee of the Screen Directors Guild. The members of the Guild decided that something should be done about a man who'd been directing pictures for 30 years. Especially since there's only one man who's been doing it that long. As you may have heard, directors as a class are a hard-boiled bunch, and to the best of my knowledge, they've never given anybody anything before, so this is an unusual occasion. We picked the Lux Radio Theater for this occasion, C.B., because it's right across the street from the site where you made Hollywood's first feature picture, The Squaw Man. And in memory of those 30 years, we brought along something which George Stevens, as president of the Guild, is going to give you right now. It tells, in some slight degree, what your fellow directors think of you. It's a plaque, C.B. I'll read the inscription because that tells our whole story. It says, in recognition of 30 years of pioneering in the motion picture industry, the entire membership of the Screen Directors Guild presents this plaque to Cecil Beatty Mill for outstanding creative achievement, invaluable contributions to technical progress, and distinguished executive leadership. This, uh, this is a very gracious gesture, gentlemen. 
In these 30 exciting years, I've received many things from many hands. But I've never received anything that I shall prize more highly than this award from the directors of Hollywood, my professional brothers. Presented by three fine artists like you, George Stevens, Ned Griffith, and Mark Sandwich. This award means, well, it, it means more than a great deal. And so, with all humility, I thank you. All of Hollywood, and I think I can speak for the radio audience, too, wish you 30 more years of success, C.B. In pictures and in the Lux Radio Theater, too. And in 30 more years, if there's anyone left who doesn't use Lux soap, I'd be very disappointed in the way you're doing the job. Lux soap is a grand product, Mr. DeMille, and I couldn't get along without it. Oh, well, don't try, Marlena. You're the perfect tribute to Lux soap. Well, what about next week, C.B.? What's the play? A magic combination of comedy, drama, romance, and music called The Strawberry Blonde. It's adapted from the Warner Brothers picture, and our stars will be Rita Hayworth, Donna Michi, and Virginia Bruce. The Strawberry Blonde is a story of the gay 90s and the adventures that walked into a dentist's office on a Sunday afternoon. Adventure from the past in the person of the Strawberry Blonde. A delightful play on three exciting stars, Donna Michi, Rita Hayworth, and Virginia Bruce. That's a great lineup, CB. We'll be listening. And we're all looking forward to the premiere of your 30th anniversary picture in Hollywood this week. And hoping we all get free passes. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. For me, this is really been a night to remember. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Donna Michi, Rita Hayworth, and Virginia Bruce starring in The Strawberry Blonde with Jack Carson. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, two fine organizations celebrate their 30th birthdays this month. The Campfire Girls and the Girl Scouts. Thousands of American girls have received training in good citizenship from these two groups. Now their work is more important than ever. So tonight, we give a birthday salute to the Girl Scouts and the Campfire Girls. Marlena Dietrich will soon be seen in the Frank Lloyd production, The Spoilers, to be released by Universal Pictures. George Raft's next picture is the universal production, Broadway. Edward G. Robinson appeared tonight through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Studio. His next picture is their production of Larceny Incorporated. Heard in tonight's play were Warren Ash as Omaha, Edwin Max as Cully, Griff Barnett as Pop, and Charles Seal, B. Benaderet, Howard McNear, Tori Carlton, and Frank Penny. Tune in next Monday night to hear Don Amici, Rita Hayworth, and Virginia Bruce starring in The Strawberry Bond. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This... <laughs>